Hey guys, Juju Bear here. Welcome back to the channel. Now it's Tuesday, so time for another episode of Total War Tuesday, where we play a best of three small funds mini tournament on any title from the Total War franchise. Now today we've got a couple of pretty entertaining battles from uh, Rome Total War 2. I've been um, fiddling around with a lot of the, the blade balance mod stuff recently. So I'm hopefully going to start bringing you guys a couple of games um, and hopefully a Total War Tuesday um, within the blade balance mod. Now I have brought uh, the Thracians here. I'm just going to put them to overhead view. The Oli Odrisni and Kindinger here. <clears throat> My opponent has brought uh, Rome. Now his setup here, he's got three Villates at the front, two Soki Hastati, uh, two Principes up the back, and on the flanks, two Equites and a General and Bodyguard General. I have got Thracian Cav, two of them, and up the front, three Mercenary Folksmen, and three Thracian Warriors, and a Thracian Royal Cav. Now, this battle, the thinking behind my army anyway, or at least with most um, Adrissian Kingdom armies anyway, is that I'm going to have two different waves, the first of which is going to be these three relatively cheap uh, mercenary folksmen. Now these guys are going to rush in, do as much damage as they possibly can uh, in a charge. These guys have ridiculous stats um, for their price. What is it? 40 me well, it, melee attack, uh, 39 weapon damage, uh, charge bonus of 48. So that's what you pay for. These guys are fairly cheap. They do carry these folks, so they do have that amazing uh, attack. And that amazing charge bonus as well is fairly punishing. So we're going to go and hack us up some Romans. We'll see if it works out. And my second line is going to be comprised of these uh, Thracian Warriors as well. Now these guys don't really... Actually, I believe none of these my units have a missile block chance. None of my infantry. Anyway, because they're carrying these this two-handed sword, these Falkses, which gives them great melee attack and weapon damage and all that kind of stuff. But uh, it means that I'm pretty susceptible to missile fire. So I'm going to have to be careful if my opponent has any missiles. And he totally does. So he's got three of them. Uh, three Velites. Yeah, so, and my, my general is, um, of course, in a Thracian Royal Cav. So, I'm going to harass. I'm just going to get my units around into awkward positions and try and take some shots at um, the enemy cavalry. He does have medium melee cavalry. Uh, I've got light missile cavalry. So... Just look at the stats, 33, 22. So my melee attack is pretty much on par with... Oh no, that's missile damage. Whoops. Melee attack. I actually have more melee attack than he does on those equites. So 40 against 33. Um, 36 weapon damage against 25 weapon damage. Though the equites do have a bonus versus large. Where I do not. Uh, he has a better charge bonus. My melee defense is better. His armor is slightly better. And our health is exactly the same. And my morale is a little bit lower. So I could actually start up to a fight against these Equites. So if I get in, you know, throw some javelins, javelins, get them out of position, make them follow me and I can throw some javelins in their back or something like that, which is exactly what's happening over here. Um, then things could work out well for me. So you can see I'm already throwing a couple of javelins now. I am light, whereas he is me uh, medium. So I am going to be able to outrun him for days. I just have to make sure that the skirmish function or the gods of the skirmish function uh, hold true and make sure that my units stay out of range. Now we'll see how that works out. This is exactly what I was talking about. Um, the skirmish function. The fucking skirmish function. Damn it. So yeah, I, d I m do a frontal YOLO charge with my Thracian Royal Cav. Turned out to be a very bad idea because uh, my Thracian Royal Cav got pummeled with javelins from four, four different units. Not including the Velites either. So I'm going to charge headlong into these units that don't really get... They don't really get a, um, a counter charge. So I'm going to be able to get a fairly good amount of damage done to these units. Though he is going to follow up straight away with his Principes and start firing into my units with these Velites. So actually a very good build for my opponent here. And he gets a very nice uh, counter charge onto my Folksman. And I don't get a charge um, with my own. So he managed to pretty much destroy, yeah, destroy my Thracian Cav over here. And he's still chasing my other one over there. So things aren't really turning out that well for me, folks. Um, we'll see how it turns out. But at the moment, it doesn't look like it's going to go so well for Juju Bear. I'm um, going to send in my second line of, of units here. Thracian Warriors coming in through the center to pummel these Soki, Soki Hastadi. And these units are going to come through and um, destroy a couple of these um, 
Roman units here, but I'm not really dealing... I mean, I'm only just starting to get my Thracian Royal Cav into his Velites. This is what I should have been doing a lot sooner. And even then, he's still got a general and bodyguard left to, to harass me with. Uh, this Equite is down to 59 men. My Thracian Cav, uh, general dead, so they're, they're kind of struggling to make ends meet. Uh, these Thracian Warriors doing okay, but... I mean, they get re recharged from an Equite, which is a medium melee cav, and that's not going to do wonders for their morale there. So, game one. Jujubeer comes flying out of the gates and just throws multiple units away uh, straight away. So, getting a few kills on a lot of these units, which is good, but uh, not being used to their full effect. This Thracian Warrior just getting pummeled into the dirt by a couple of different Roman units. So, that's uh, game one to my opponent here. I can't remember his name. I'll see if I can get it now. Uh, history buff number one. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Woeful performance. Uh, I think I just came out of the... Uh, into this game, kind of not really expecting too much. But uh, that's how it bites you in the ass. Anyway, I brought Carthage into the, into the second battle here. Uh, starting to get a little bit more serious. I think he kind of saw how I played in the first match and, and thought that I wasn't doing so good. So he brought Pokemon, which is the worst faction that you can bring, pretty much. Um, so, General's Bodyguard with the with the s two silver uh, XP chevrons. Uh, my core is made of a Mercenary Noble Fighter. That'll be my killing potential. On my flanks is Libyan, Late Libyan Hoppate is good for getting rid of um, enemy Cav. My main line is made up of Mercenary Gallic Warriors. And my front line, or my skirmishes, are made up of these two Mercenary Iberian Swords, Swordsmen. Um, those units there, uh, they carry the Soliferum Javelin, so they do have a, a bonus versus cavalry. Especially a Skirmisher Cav, they won't be able to stand up to those fire. So he's got two of them, those Skirmisher Cav, and he's got a Pergamese uh, Noble Cavalry unit. This is actually a very good unit. I actually think it's fairly underrated, this unit. Um, every time I come up against it, it seems to do quite well against me. I don't know if you guys remember the Total War Tuesday, where I played against Booty Man. But um, his Pergamese Noble Cavalry absolutely tore me up. So I'm, I'm fairly... I'm wary of this unit, to say the least. Um, he's got two Agema Spears, almost like Thorea Spears, but better. Um, in terms of stats and, you know, staying power. And he's got four of these... Oh, wait, three. Four of these ja uh, Javelinmen up the front. So lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of uh, Javelins. He seems to be playing um, a fairly interesting... Uh, game with me at the moment, in which these Agema Spears can go into square. So I think you saw in the last in the last episode, he would kind of have a tight uh, formation, you know, putting units in square, and then the rest of his um, you know, javelin wielding uh, units would fire into the sides or the flanks or the backs of my my own units. So it's working out quite well for him, and um, I don't blame him for trying it again. You know, if it works, then why change his strategy? So I'm moving up. I know that he's got a couple of uh, skirmisher cav in the woods over here somewhere. So I'm going to send a couple of these Iberian swordsmen over here. One uh, mercenary Iberian swordsman would be able to deal with both of those skirmisher cav units. Um, these guys have, I want to say like five or six uh, javelins, which almost puts them into the territory of, you know, like a, a javelin unit, even though they are a swordsman unit. Fairly cheap. I think it's like 350 talons that they cost. Yeah, so you're going to see me, um, because he is firing from the woods, so he's going to get some fairly good cover, you know, sitting in there. But I did get two kills off the, off the first volley there. You're not really missing much, uh, in terms of the other battle. I've lost seven units, uh, because I am out in the open, and my unit here has not got much armor at all. You can see I've got, only got about 15 armor. But I'm getting a fair few kills, so we took out 14 of those, um, Skirmisher Cav. And that number is going to be rising fairly soon. I decide to get um, my other skirmisher cav, uh, skirmisher, fucking swordsman into this fray. And we're going to try and focus fire on this uh, skirmisher cav unit. And they are falling uh, very quickly. Down to 21 men. And this unit's down to about 78, I think. So we've already dealt, wow. We've already dealt with um, one of his skirmisher cav. I'm not going to waste my ammo on trying to chase them down. So I'm just going to move up, occupy a better position and see if I can fire into the enemy uh, from there. He's bringing his javelin up. So I'm going to have to try and uh, 
face him again. I was thinking about getting my general's bodyguard and just making a beeline for that unit. But you guys saw what happened in the last game when he had all these other javelin bearing units and shot my general to death. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to make that mistake again. So, firing lots more, lots of more uh, javelins into these skirmisher cav. I don't really know what he's doing. He doesn't really seem to be uh, using these guys to their best potential. I'm going to chase off his uh, javelin men with my own mercenary Gallic warrior. That's not really an engagement that he's want to, going to want to go into. I'm getting some fairly good jab tosses off into his skirmisher cav. They are getting quite a few kills here, 12 kills. Most of those are on these very cheap Iberian swordsmen. But yeah, you can see I got another jab toss off with these uh, Gallic warriors. So it's kind of fight, fighting fire with fire at the moment. Um, using javelins against javelins. So these expendable Gallic warriors are going to chase off those skirmisher cav. Don't really worry. Don't really care if they um, take me out too much. Um, this Iberian swordsman is out of ammo, so I'm going to use him to, to soak up some javelins while I get my, my units into combat. So while they're there, all of his um, skirmishes are going to absolutely tear apart this Iberian swordsman, but that's okay with me, because that's kind of what it's being used for at the moment. It looks like he's changed his, uh, his um, target, and he's going to target my general's bodyguard at this point. I am going to charge straight into his line of Agima Spears. But as soon as I do, I'm going to pull out straight away. He does pull back with his Pergamese Noble Cav. And he he is like hiding behind his Agima Spears with his um with his Javelin units. Now I'm getting some fairly good charges in here. I, I want to make sure I can pin down his Agima Spears uh, with a lot of my units. So here we go. We're going to get a full frontal charge with his um, Pergamese Noble Cav into this big old blob of units. And they are going to get lots of kills there. Here we go. 60 once. Wow, holy shit. Holy shit. 140 kills straight off the bat. <laughs> Absolutely flattening a Iberian Swordsman in the process. 150 kills, one charge. That's got to be some kind of record. That has to be some kind of record. Wow. Anyway, I managed to catch him with a couple of my units. Uh, these mercenary Gallic warriors. And he's going to fire into the rest of this foray with his javelin men. Uh, so very good play for my opponent here. I actually managed to catch a few of them with my uh, general's bodyguard there as well. So, so all across the line, he is engaged. Uh, my no uh, my mercenary noble fighters will be able to cut through these Agima spears, but it's just going to take him a very long time to do so. Um, I managed to get a hold of his um, Pergamese noble cav here with my with my own uh, late Libyan hoplites, and I'm going to get into his skirmishes with my other late Libyan hoplite here as well. I'm basically just trying to hold down his noble cav. Uh, with my spear units and see if I can get some kills. Just because they're up to 200 kills already and I have nothing to answer them with. I don't really want to sacrifice my own general's bodyguard in there. Um, but it looks like more and more increasingly I'm going to have to. Um, so getting a few kills from my, my bodyguard there. He does have his Pergamese Noble Cavalry out here and it's defended by a couple of these skirmisher units, these javelins. We are cutting through these Agima Skiers down to 67 men and 100 men over there. I can see what his plan was, but it was it was almost too easy to flank around because I had such a cost-effective army. I was able to bring a lot of units. Um, oh, okay, it looks like we're going to get a nice charge here from the Pergamese Noble Cav into these late Libyan Hoplites. So he's going to sit down a couple of those and he's going to continue straight through. Good choice. Definitely a good choice. And getting into the backs of these uh, mercenary Gallic Warriors. So he's piling on the kills with his Mer Pergamese Noble Cavalry. But I'm going to send my uh, General's Bodyguard in just to hold this Pergamese uh, Cav down while my other Spear units can get down in on this fight. So this late Libyan Hoplite getting 39 kills. So he's got a 30 bonus versus large. That's what makes him so deadly against these uh, Noble Cavs. So he's going to take a lot of losses pulling this unit out. But you can see what I mean. Like it's actually such a good unit. Like 100 health, 45 armor, not the best, but that's still pretty good for a, for a shock cavalry. He gets a really nice rear charge into these late Libyan Hoplites. Um, but I did manage to catch him with my, um, with my own General's Bodyguard. So really utilizing that shot cavalry very well. But my broken up formation here with these late Libyan Hop Look at him run. It looks so funny. But um, yeah, my spread out formation with these uh, late Libyan Hoplites would be kind of awkward to charge into. And luckily this, this uh, unit was able to hold. So my Noble Fighter managed to cut through that at a game of Spear unit and only took two, uh, 20 losses. It is exhausted at this point. 
And we're managing to destroy this other a Gamer Spear unit as well. Um, so we are chasing down uh, my opponent here. He is going to have one last hurrah and charge in his um, his Noble Cav and get a whole bunch more kills on my late Libyan Hopate. So almost 400 kills there. 358, 360 and climbing. Absolutely ridiculous. So I'm about to lose one of these units, but I'm going to get my um, General's Bodyguard in here just to seal the deal and finish the fight. Absolutely ruining my units there. Excellent use of this uh, Pergamese Noble Cavalry. Um, yeah, what I said at the, at the start of the game. Jesus Christ, this guy messed me up. Absolutely messed me up. Almost 400 kills on a unit that I think it costs a lot. More than it should, but definitely being cost effective there. Getting rid of a whole bunch of different units. Um, so yeah, game uh, game two goes to Jujube. So it's one all. History buff. Uh, tanking out. This is the first win while I, I clinched the second. Now, I brought the Swaby. I was like, oh, enough's enough. I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this. Uh, playing as a Swaby with a uh, Aria Vistus General is one of the most satisfying things you can do. And I was like, yeah, man, I'm totally going to do it. Um, my opponent here has brought a Carrion Axeman, two Galatian Royal Guard, two of them, that's right. And he's also brought a, 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 a Ptolemaic Cav uh, unit which is also a, a shock cavalry unit. So we've already seen how, how good he is with these shock cavs, so I'm going to make sure I keep an eye on that guy. Um, not, not a good build. I think he was just trying to have fun with it. And um, that, that's always good. It's nice to see... It's really refreshing to see a build that um, goes against what you normally would see. But against a build like, like this, this Swaby Rush, um, it's not going to hold up. Uh, not at all. So I've got three of these Wolf Warriors, uh, backed up by a Warden of Spear General. My opponent playing as, a ca as, as Egypt, I knew that he did have ex access to the uh, Ptolemaic Cav, so I made sure I brought a, uh, a Warden of Spear General. I've got two of these Germanic Slingers and two of these Germanic Scout Riders as well. So one on that flank and one on this flank. Now you're going to see some really annoying gameplay from me here. Um, a lot of people would get very sour about the way that I'm playing. But, as far as I'm concerned, this is, this is how you use them. This is just how you use Scout Riders. Um, you know, you get behind the opponent and you shoot them in the back. And then you run away <laughs> when they do this kind of thing. So he brings his uh, Carrion Axeman out and I'm going to hightail it out of there. Yeah, you bet I'm not going to hang around with those uh, javelins fanging about. So getting a few very crucial kills on these Galatian Royal Guard. I'm going to hopefully soften these units up before I do... Uh, frontal yellow charge into them. This Ptolematic Cav, I've already taken two losses. They are very heavy, so they're not really going to be able to um, to get around very easily. So even even though he's charging towards me, he's never going to be able to catch me. Like it's not, it's just not a thing. <laughs> like these are uh, Germanic Scout Riders, very light missile cavalry. They're able to catch um, horse archers. These units. Um, so the fact that he's charging me with his Ptolematic Cavalry is kind of suicide just throwing the unit you know, away so I think he notices what I'm doing and he knows that there's no escape so he's just gonna charge straight headlong into my my own units here and I see the danger because there is a very real danger that he could destroy you know two or three different units so I'm gonna sacrifice my dramatic scout rider um, prevent his charge and then counter charge him with my own wolf warriors here so even though and I pop a uh, cavalry counter tactics on my wooden as general there so I only lost a few Dramatic Scout Riders uh, just because he was um, he actually had attack orders on a different unit. But I didn't actually lose too many of these Wolf Warriors here. I mean, I lost 30. And I lost three of these Wodenaz Spears. But in the grand scheme of things, that's kind of not... That's nothing. So my Dramatic Scout Riders, 13 kills. Just being annoying, getting around. Uh, these Dramatic Scout Riders, 42 kills. Pretty much all of these kills are going to be um, very cost effective for me just because my opponents brought such a um, such a strong build. Not a strong build, but a... Uh, I, I don't even know what you would call it. Like an elite core build? Like you've just... There's no numbers. There's just quality. There's no quantity. <laughs> so this is a sad sight to see. A uh, Galatian World Guard getting picked apart from all sides by uh, Germanic Scout Riders. Even though it's good for me, um, it's, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> My opponent's sake. 
So he's just popped um, Raise Banner, which gives his um, his unit's area of influence. What is it? Melee defense. That's the one. So you can see melee defense has jumped up to 73 and 39. He is getting some javelin tosses off into my into my units with his carrying axemen. But I've just popped um, fast charge. So these wolf warriors have got a charge bonus of 55, and my um, word and our spears a charge bonus of 49. And we're going to see precursors fly, and then some seriously brutal, brutal combat here. So the Glacian Royal Guard, even though they are very good, uh, they're not going to be able to hold up to um, the wrath of um, <laughs> of an Oreo Vistus Swaby charge. It's just not a thing. So he has popped Headhunt, but my units are just, you know, charge bonus 75, uh, weapon damage of 29. I think I just popped uh, Pride, there we go. So Armor Penetration has gone through the roof. Uh, his Galatian Royal Guard down to 27 men over there, and they're now routing. And this unit down to 98, because I guess they did get a, a better charge than the other units. So I'm gonna get some rear charges in here. His units are exhausted or winded at this point because they used uh, their abilities. But yeah, with a combination of fast charge and pride, I'm, I'm able to take down his units. I, there's not really anything that can stand up to this uh, general's ability. It's just not really an option. <laughs> so I don't think I actually lost any units in that in that little uh, battle there. He's only got his uh, carrying axeman gen general left, and even then he's going to rout. So raw power, raw killing potential from the sway we brought. Uh, and managed to destroy a whole bunch of units. His Ptolemaic Cavalry, all of his units got a decent amount of kills, but obviously, you know, with this quality, you'd want them to be getting over 100, especially on units as cheap as the ones that I brought. So, definitely a lesson to be learned. So, three, two, two to Juju Bear and one to History Buff. Thanks for the game, dude. Um, very nice to have a, a player over who brings some interesting builds. It's always nice to see. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see you guys later. This is Juju Bear signing out. Peace.